The SS Atlantic Heritage Park Society is a group of volunteers dedicated to preserving the memory of this dramatic event through research, safekeeping of artifacts and memorabilia, and education. The results of their efforts include the SS Atlantic Heritage Park and Interpretation Center, which is home to the museum and craft shop, the grave site and monument, the ruins of the Church of Reverend Ancient, who was prominent in the days following the rescue, and a park featuring a rustic walking trail and boardwalk, providing wonderful ocean views. The museum doesn't charge admission, but be sure to leave a donation. While inside, you'll see the artifacts featured in our documentary, including parts of the ship, personal possessions of passengers, items from the cargo hold, and other items related to the story of the ship. You'll also find an excellent array of homemade Nova Scotian gifts, and you can order some of the best blueberry cake and tea in the province. After visiting the museum and shop, make your way down the trail to see the other sites the park has to offer. Now we're really close to the Protestant mass grave. It's just a few more feet down this trail. But right here behind me is Old St. Paul's Church, an Anglican church which was built in 1853. New St. Paul's Church is right over there by the Visitor's Center. Reverend Ancient was the first resident priest of this church, and unfortunately the church burned down in the 1960s. Moving down a little bit farther from Old St. Paul's Church, we actually have to go through an old pioneer graveyard. They call it the pioneer graveyard, and the dates are early 1900s, late 1800s. So this graveyard actually came from after the Atlantic's time. So this is the uh, site of the Protestant uh, mass grave. There are 277 people buried here. And uh, they were buried in uh, the summer, June and July, May, June and July of 1873 by Reverend William Ancient. The place was really forgotten for a long time. In 1905, there was a monument put here in memory of the, uh, the victims. So that's uh, 30 years after the event. And it was only because a local clergyman uh, wrote to the White Star Line and asked for money to build a monument, which they did. The plaque was added several decades later and erroneously dated the memorial to 1915, which is incorrect. And then in the uh, late 20th century, in the, in the 1990s, there was a lot of erosion to the gravesite. Even bones were starting to, to show and uh, to, the, to the point where the dogs were down sniffing around. So uh, the uh, provincial government in 1998 uh, uh, put the money into uh, reinforcing the gravesite, so you'll notice that the rocks are all a different color. Uh, that's because uh, uh, that was done uh, much later, and of course it's not the native granite that's common in the area. There was a big effort then put into uh, to clean the area, to clean up all the brush, uh, exposed uh, the old uh, Pioneer Cemetery that is now clear and uh, a monument was built, a walkway and so on, and the Heritage Center was also built, and that opened in 2002. Although not a part of the park, I'd be remiss if I failed to mention the Catholic graves located just down the road. After seeing the Protestant grave site and visiting the park, be sure to make your way to the Star of the Sea Cemetery where 150 additional victims of the disaster are buried. To support the SS Atlantic Society, anyone can sign up on their website and become a friend of the Society for only $10. If anyone feels so inclined, additional contributions are always appreciated. In exchange for membership, you'll receive emails of their newsletter and updates, and the knowledge that your contribution is going toward maintaining the graves and continuing the legacy of this nearly forgotten disaster. You'll find them at www.ssatlantic.com.